Hey guys, welcome back to r slash relationships. In today's story, my ex called the cops on me claiming I took our kid without permission and a SWAT team showed up at my door. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the video. When I was 21 I was dating this girl and did not think to be safe. She got pregnant and me, being young, dumb and in love, decided to get married to her. Only to find a couple years later that it was probably a bad idea. Still, we had a toddler together and it was not the worst relationship in the world. So I stayed more out of obligation. When I was 29 I finally realized that she was draining everything in me and I was a depressed shell of a person. There was no love left on either end and instead I was just coming home from work to get insulted and told I was not good enough. It was harsh and I had known for over a year that she was going behind my back and hooking up with other guys. It took way too long but I did end up coming to the conclusion that I needed to divorce her. I could have made things fast and easy if I just agreed to give her things and as far as possessions and money I would have just to get away from her. The only thing was I had no intention of giving her full custody of our child and she didn't like that at all. Figuring that she could get more money if she had full custody and I just never saw my kid. Plus here in Jersey, like most of the country, mothers tend to have the upper hand with custody. After all the fighting and seeing the conditions she had moved into with our son, I did not even want to share custody. I wanted full custody with our son not being anywhere near her. She drank, did drugs and didn't seem to care about making him a top priority. Something that I find needs to happen if you're gonna be raising a kid. He was only 8 and couldn't take care of himself like she was seemingly expecting him to do. During the custody fight we were both living within 20 minutes of each other and having shared custody until the courts could make a decision. Honestly, it was not looking great for her losing all rights to our kid until she decided to start making bad decisions. Those being filing reports on me for things that I didn't do, she had contacted police claiming that I was harassing her with text messages. The only things I would message her about though was confirming times with dropping off and picking up our kid. Other reports had her claiming that she saw me peeking through her windows at night and skulking around the property. None of which I did and none of it I got to defend myself about. She was just filing reports and I was not being informed about any of that. The only reason I knew was because the calls she was making got crazier as time went on. It became a pattern that when my son was staying with me, the cops would show up after my ex called them, claiming several stupid things, from me being drunk high to even putting my kid in danger. They would come and see that I was sober and my kid was either watching TV, eating dinner or asleep in bed. It was getting insane and felt like she was doing this just to drive me crazy. I think the worst of the pre-custody trial calls was when she claimed that I had guns in my house that were not properly stored and letting my kid play with them. That call got a ton of cops showing up thinking I had illegal weapons since I don't have a gun license. Which makes sense considering I don't own a gun. The closest thing I have is a paintball gun which which is in a garage and in a locked case. Because it was a little pricey and I didn't want my 8 year old finding and trying to play with it. If I can promise anything about kids it's that anything not locked or glued to the ground is in danger of being broken. They explore the world, it's part of growing up. I asked the cop flat out, is there anything I can do about my ex making all these false calls to the police about me? He told me I couldn't really stop it but I should go to the station and get all the reports for court. He understood that she was trying to make me look bad to avoid me getting custody of Ethan but when police get called they kind of have to respond and check it out every single time. Looking back I should have been calling them on her too because I knew that they would see that she was giving him a worse environment to live in. I didn't want to do that though and risk anything so I kept it all inside and let my anger for her stew. Part of the court's protocol was to send a social worker for home visits on both sides so I'm sure her reports would paint me in a good light. I went to the station and got all the paperwork of things filed against me and that was when I learned about all the bogus ones that I didn't even know about. I figured she had only 4 calls against me when actually it was almost 20. In only a short period of about 3 months too I gave it all over to my lawyer who agreed that this was excessive and showed that something was wrong with her. We finally had our day in court and of course I was the one that brought up all the false reports that she filed against me. 
needing to go through everything and show that out of all 20 reports, not a single time did the police find me at fault of anything. The judge even asked her why she felt that Ethan was so unsafe with me, to the point that she kept getting police involved. She said, well, he is mentally unstable, there's something wrong with him and he shouldn't be allowed to raise a kid. This was the first I heard about my mental illness, and as the judge pressed for any kind of proof of the diagnosis, she had nothing. Just that she knew crazy when she saw it. Meanwhile, the only person that was seemingly unstable was her during all of this. The judge then getting into the house visits and me finding out just how badly it went for her. I never asked our kid to tell me anything, as I wanted his life to remain as normal as possible. The judge started talking again and it was not looking good for her. The social worker notes on the house visit showed that there was open alcohol, an unclean environment and several missed days of school when under your sole care. It was his turn to talk but that didn't stop my ex from butting in and needing to be shut up. Excuse me but he has a gun. That is far more dangerous than alcohol. The paintball gun which had already been discussed and shown to be locked away. Plus my house was seen as clean and my son had his own space, I kept it safe for him and he never missed or was late to school on my watch. What really put the nail in the coffin was that they had done drug testing on the both of us and hers did not come back clean. I was granted sole custody of Ethan, she was allowed down the line to prove that she changed and tried to get joint custody. The first thing her saying after the decision was, does that mean I'm getting less money? It showed her true priorities. Normally this would be the end of the story but all of that was background to what she did next and the revenge I got on her. I knew that the last 7 months were probably hell on my son and with the school year finishing I wanted to treat him to something good. Now he loved the beach more than anything else so once the school year was done I took some vacation days off work. We packed the car and drove 3 hours from the house to the Jersey Shore. I rented a beach house for a week so we could relax, enjoy the ocean and both get a break that we needed. Since I had custody now, I didn't need permission or to tell my ex what I was doing. She found out from a mutual friend opening her big mouth where I was going and she decided to do her biggest crazy thing yet. She called the police claiming that I had shown up at her place when Ethan was outside, threw him in my car and kidnapped him. She told them that I had no custody, had weapons and was mentally deranged and dangerous. Along with the exact location where we were staying, which she made seem like some kind of safe house. Like next I was gonna take him to another country never to be seen again. They don't waste time on calls like this to confirm information and instead send a SWAT team to infiltrate and arrest me right away. It was insane because one minute I was just playing a game with him and the next a ton of heavily armored guys with huge guns busted in and started screaming at the top of their lungs for me to get on the ground. Ethan started crying because he was scared and I won't act too manly to admit that I was crying in fear too. I was put in cuffs and brought into a nearby station to wait for a detective to come and speak to me. Finally getting to speak to somebody and explain that I had full custody and could not have kidnapped him. That I had no weapons which was confirmed by the SWAT team tearing up the entire place. Trust me, I had to pay a huge amount of money to the owner because of all the damage. That I then was able to get back from my ex later on. Now the police were angry at her for wasting resources and putting her own son in danger. Doing what she did was beyond anything else she had done and it was seriously illegal. Most of the time fake SWAT calls are something dumb teenagers do from what I can see online. But this was the same kind of thing that was gonna cause a felony charge to be placed on her. Maybe it was just the years of her ruining my life or the fact that she now scarred our son possibly forever. But I wanted to get revenge on her, revenge that was bigger than anything a judge was gonna dole out, I wanted to ruin her life after she pulled that and I was gonna do just that. Along with making sure that a judge would never let her regain custody of Ethan. Because you don't F with me and you certainly don't F with my son. Now it might be hard to imagine from everything I said but my ex did actually have a job and her job was working at a kindergarten with young kids. Not the teacher but the extra person they have in the classroom that kind of just helps. I probably knew the term at one point but it's just fully gone from my brain now. I made sure to personally call the school and tell them that she was currently being investigated and was arrested for a felony that involved putting a child in danger. Due to the state policy they could not let her enter the school unless she had papers showing that she was cleared of all charges. 
And I was pushing the courts to make sure that she didn't get off with just a warning. Since this was criminal and not family court, the judge was different and unaware of anything that happened with the custody battle before. I made sure that my lawyer forwarded to that judge all the past info about her calling the police for false things multiple times in the past, that she claimed kidnapping despite losing custody of her son and the reasoning why. Plus, I sent an anonymous thing to the school showing that she lost custody of her child due to the courts finding her unfit. Which which I was sure they would spread around to make sure that she didn't get a job anywhere else. She was out on bail, but when it came time for her court date, she did not even bother showing up. So they arrested her and her bond for bail was not gonna be given back after she pulled that. She also couldn't get another bail and had to wait in jail for two months until she could get another court date. At that point she was in more trouble because when she was arrested that second time, she was found with drugs on her. Now, I haven't talked about them yet, but her parents were the kind of people with a ton of money. They knew that she got divorced, but she had kept everything else from them. Making it seem like her life was great, she had custody of Ethan and that the bail money they gave her was for a minor DUI thing. Court records can be found online, so I found it and emailed it to them. Along with an at-length email that she was currently in jail, that she had lost custody, was addicted to drugs and called a SWAT team on me, putting her kid in danger, which is why she was actually arrested. This was the pinnacle of my revenge and yes, it boiled down to that I told her parents on her. These people were actually amazing and I don't know how she shared any genetics with them. With that email opening dialogue, I made it clear that they were more than welcome to be in the grandson's life. Holidays, visits, whatever, but I also made it clear that I would never bring him or allow him to go over to them if she was gonna be there. They were on my side for this and cut her off from her trust fund money that she had been getting the entire time. Her entire life was basically ruined at this point and she had yet to even step foot in front of the judge. I don't think I need to have suspense to tell you that she was going to prison for quite a few years between everything and her parents made it clear that even after she got out they were not gonna support her. And with a record and me making sure the word spread around, no school district would hire her. Plus any chance of her getting even partial custody of Ethan is gone. By the time she gets out he will be a teenager and while I won't talk bad about her to him, I know that he will understand at some point. I want to give him a good life and didn't think that a divorce and custody battle would end this way. However, I don't feel bad about getting some revenge on her and ruining a life that she honestly was already running into the ground. By the way, a lot of you keep asking about how my son is doing after the effects of the swatting. He did have some problems for a couple of months being scared of people coming in and having some nightmares. He spoke to a counselor and things kind of tapered off to where we think he is okay now. And I can only hope and pray that there are no long term effects from it on him. Edit number two, also getting a lot of questions on why her cheating on me didn't come up in court. Well, despite the length, this is kind of an abbreviated version of events. I could not include every detail to the story, but it did get brought up and had an effect on the divorce. I just did not think it was important enough to follow up on. And here, ripe stars, if you enjoy these relationship stories, then please don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments, because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much. The next one is another Am I the A-hole story. Am I the A-hole for calling the police? About a week ago my cat got out and went missing for a few days. I was heartbroken, I put his litter box outside, hung flyers everywhere and literally cried non-stop. It was bad and then I noticed someone was taking down my flyers. This made me really upset so I started knocking on people's doors. One neighbor told me that she overheard her neighbor's kid excitedly thanking his mom for a new cat and when I walked up their driveway, what do you know, my cat was sitting in their windowsill. He immediately started pawing at the glass when he saw me and it broke my heart. I knocked on the front door and explained to the lady that answered that this was my cat, he is chipped and everything so I have proved that he is mine. She literally laughed in my face and slammed the door. I knocked again and this time a huge dude answered and told me, this is my son's cat, now go away, and slammed the door in my face. I went home and bawled like a baby. I called my dad, he's the county sheriff, to tell him what happened and to ask what I should do. He told me to stay home and that he would send over a deputy to take care of it and well, apparently the deputy let it slip that I was the county sheriff's daughter and now the catnapper lady is telling everyone in the neighborhood that I'm a spoiler brat who went crying to her daddy. The thing is, I would have called the cops regardless. The only reason I called my dad first is because I was bawling and didn't want to sob on the phone to a stranger if I could avoid it plus I wanted his advice on how to get my cat back. 
Apparently the kid's dad also went to jail because the deputy ran his plates and saw that he had a warrant so this woman is also telling everyone I got her partner arrested too. But how was I supposed to know the guy had a freaking warrant? I just wanted my cat back. Am I the a-hole? And yeah, ripe stars, let me know what you think about this in the comments, but personally I would say OP is definitely not the a-hole, and if I would be in that situation and someone stole my Disney, I would probably go nuclear. No questions asked. Either way, some people in the comments said, not the a-hole, they stole your cat. Whatever they get after that is completely their own fault. Keep your kitty indoors though, so they cannot get to it again. Comment number two, not the a-hole. This is the epitome of play stupid games, win stupid prizes. They stole your cat and tried to refuse to keep him. It's not your fault that they did that. It's definitely not your fault that the guy was evading arrest. Keep your cat indoors in case they try it again and know that you did everything right. And yeah, ripe stars, honestly, if anyone would say that OP is the bad person in this story, I would definitely question their judgment and maybe even go as far as call that person an idiot. Screw anyone who steals pets. And the next one is a revenge story. In October 2014, I moved into a basement room and shared it with a lady from Oman. The LL landlord and his wife lived upstairs but shared nothing with us. I am short 5 foot 6 and have short arms and a beer belly. So reaching the back burner safely is not always easy for me. The large front burner was broken the day I moved in and I asked the landlord to fix it. I then went and bought some groceries and while I was out he went in and fixed it. Later I learned that he simply used a 14 gauge wire to move the power from the back to the front right burner. Fast forward to 2016. The fixed burner starts to spark. In early February I ask him to go buy a new stove as the one he has is not safe. I then go online, find a half dozen local scratch and dent and refurb companies that have new or refurbished stoves for under 500 bucks. He refuses and again just fixes it with 14 gauge wire. At this point I am not feeling 100% safe in my own apartment, so I call the Toronto Fire Department safety inspectors and the Ontario Electrical Safety Authority. They come in and find about 40 violations each. A month later, after about 8 hours of work and a new $800 stove, the electrician leaves and the ESA inspects again and approves it. That night my landlord comes banging on my door and tells me that I cost him $10,000 in repairs and fines and I am being evicted in 60 days. I looked him in the eye and said, man, if you just effing listened to me and bought that $300 stove at the scratch and dent place, you could have saved $9,700, right? And shut the door in his face and cranked a TV so I didn't hear him knocking anymore. Edit, six weeks later I moved out on my own volition because I got tired of him and his wife stomping around. Eventually I moved into a nice studio apartment and been here a while now. And yeah guys, if you have ever been in the unfortunate situation of dealing with an awful landlord, then I would love to hear your story either in the comments or on r slash ripe stories on reddit, where you can post your own long stories and there is a good chance I will read them in a video. Thank you so much. And now let's move on to the next story. Thursday morning last week I got an appointment randomly scheduled with the CEO. Come to find out they were laying me off and would send further details via email. In the email it just said sometime during this week send your laptop monitor and computer accessories to XYZ address and to use their billing account. I complied with their demands. So I went to my local FedEx with just the items unpacked. I asked the worker if they would package it all for me using their highest quality wrap and make sure it's incredibly secure. They just smiled and said they understand exactly what to do since I told them I got laid off by this company and I don't care how much they bill them. They began using foot after foot of bubble wrap and yards of tape. Come to the end of the packaging process, they show me the bill and it's $68. Not a ton, but it was worth the laugh. And yeah guys, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on all major podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts. Furthermore, you can find bonus content by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or by clicking the join button here on YouTube. For a small monthly fee, you will get access to dozens and dozens of exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow.